United States Code, Title 18, and this is Part 3, sub, uh, Chapter 306, uh, Subsection 4108. I'm going to read it to you how most people read it. Okay, I'm going to take off my glasses so I can read it again. Prior to the transfer of an offender to the United States, the fact that the offender consents to such transfer and that such consent is voluntary and with full knowledge of the consequences thereof shall be verified in the country in which the sentence was imposed by a United States magistrate judge or by a citizen specifically designated by a judge of the United States as defined in Section 451 of Title 28, United States Code. The designation of a citizen who is an employee or officer or of a department or agency of the United States shall be with the approval of the head of that department or agency. B. The verifying officer shall inquire of the offender whether he understands and agrees that the transfer will be subject to the following conditions. Huh? When you read, does anybody understand that? No. Okay, so let me, let me tell you who wrote that. A lawyer wrote that, and they wrote it in terminology that we can't understand. And so we don't want to sound stupid, so the judge says, do you understand that? What do you say? Yes, no. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, we, that's what we do. I mean, you go to court. This, this is what they're wrapping everybody under their jurisdiction. This is Title 18. I said this to, the ju to a judge. I said, are you um, referring to Title 18, uh, Part 3, Subsection 4108? And the judge goes, uh, what are you referring to? And I go, uh, the consent. Because he said, do you understand that you're waiving your rights? And I said, no, I don't understand that. Why would I do that? I want all the rights I can possibly get in this, this court. I said, are you, are you referring to Title 18? And he looked at me without blinking and he goes, what part? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's at least 306 parts, chapters. And there's... So here's what, here's what I know. In, in the U.S. Code, under definitions, it says the United States, definition of the United States, is a corporation. Okay? It doesn't say a government. It says a corporation. So now that we know a corporation, if we look up the word corporation, has anyone ever looked up a corporation? They have stockholders. That's the big part. They also have a board of directors. And the, and the corporation is run and operated by the board of directors. So if the United States is, in fact, a corporation, I don't want to step on anybody's toes if you're here for the first time and, and you're new, okay? Just do some investigation. So here's what I did. It says, up there, is that, are you with me? Okay, let's look up the definitions of the word in this code. And remember, this is just a code. So I didn't get to do code, but if you were in a Boy Scout, you have a code of honor, right? If you break the code of honor, can you go to jail? No. Why? Because it's not a law, Right? Okay, codes are for a group of people that agree to abide or behave in a manner that's consistent with a code. Okay, so remember, the U.S., they're, they're, giving us, they're giving us notice. This is just a code. This is not law. So if you guys act like you're under this code, you're going to pay the fine for breaking this code. Okay, so I use the Electric Law website. And the reason why I do Electric Law is because it has the terminologies that attorneys and judges use. So it's really good to use that. But I also like the Black's Law Dictionary. So well, we're going to start all over with 4108, verification of, a cons of consent of offender to transfer to the United States. Okay? If you look at, um, we already went over the United States. Now, some people think the United States is exactly the same thing as the United States of America with different capitals. Uh, you're wrong. If it's, a, it, it, it's, mu it's much, much different. America is not the same thing as the United States, nor is North America the same thing as America. Okay? I mean, when you say North America, we're talking about Mexico, you know, America, and Canada. Okay? Now, I, j I just took the words. So, it says prior to the transfer. So, let's look up the word transfer. So, I look up the word transfer. Um, I I'm, I'm skipped the part right there where it says, okay, first is the United States... Okay. The same place or thing as the United States of America. And to some it is. But to the watchful eye, it's two separate and distinct places far away from each other, yet they're so close that they're literally on top of each other. When you walk into the court, you are actually walking into a foreign country. The court's goal is to obtain your consent before it moves forward and transfers your person to their country or their state. Like every state has its border, 
we need to know where the borders are. We need to know where the borders are for the court. Okay? And the borders are realistically in the words you speak, the way you conduct yourself, and the mannerisms in which you treat the judge. Okay? If you act like a slave, they're going to treat you like one. If you act with responsibility, and like you are not a slave, and you're not a citizen, and there's no contract in place, then he is going to treat you accordingly. Okay? So the word transfer. The act by which the owner of a thing delivers it to another person with the intent of passing the rights which he has in it to the latter. Anybody hear that? I'm going to transfer my rights to the judge. Okay? And once I do that, if I had the right to put me in jail, he now has the right to put me in jail. Or he has the right to impose a fine or levy on me. Okay? Now, if I don't transfer that right to a corporation, the corporation comes from the word corpse. It means he's dead. Okay? That corpse cannot do anything without me moving it. By me giving him transfer, by transferring something to him, he now has it. So this is what they're looking to do. They're trying to transfer your rights to them. They have to do it every time you walk in. They can't do it once, and it's good for the rest of your life. Every time. Okay. To transfer means to change. For example, one may transfer a legacy, and then there's these three first, second, and third things. The third one is the most important. It says, by the change of the person who has bound to pay the legacy, as I direct the sum of $100 which I directed should be charged upon my house, which means a state which I gave to court them, shall be paid by my ex- executors. Okay, so... What that, if you understand what that says, that says that I can tell Jim to pay my bill. The judge, realistically, is the trustee. The executors okay, took our birth certificates, they funded the nation, and now we are the sponsor of the credit. We are the sponsor why the corporation is able to, to operate. is because of our signature and because of what our value is. Okay, so... The offender. Now, this is if this gets too deep and I get if I get way off in the in the deep end, I'm sorry. We'll take a break or we'll just stop. But when you get pulled over by a highway patrolman, you're an offender. At some point you show up for your first hearing and now you're the defendant. How did they do that? It's a magic wand. <laughs> I'm serious. I get it. If you guys have ever been if you've ever been pulled over, it says you have committed offense. You're an offender and you sign. Without committing, without signing for guilt, you're going to appear. Okay. Well, if you sign that document, you entered a contract. It's a contract because there's two people on it, and it's actually a negotiable bill. Mm-hmm. Okay. That means you signed something to be paid for in in advance. Now, without saying too much about this, you need to take care of that ticket within three days. If you don't, you you're turned into a defendant. I'm going to go into some of the stuff, what it says in Title 18 in the dictionary. It talks about Title 18. Because you don't come in early enough, they treat you like a juvenile delinquent. And that's what they call you in Title 18. Because you can't handle your affairs, we're going to be your mom and dad for you. And we're going to take care of this for you. Okay, so offender. A person who has been convicted of an offense, or has been adjudicated or adjudged, to have committed an act of juvenile delinquency, and it specifically says 18 U.S.C., and that's what we're checking out. Where is this definition go? The definition is an electric law. Electric law? Yeah, electric law. And it's, if you look up electric law on the, on the Internet, it'll show you that. So this is, um, I'm going to go over the same thing again. I believe that we have three days to settle all disputes on the private side before it is brought to the public side. When we don't, we have literally changed from an offender to a defendant. Our dishonor has moved the thing to default, and it says the court sees us as a juvenile delinquent. We don't show up and settle the issues without being called to by a court summons 20 to 30 days later, that makes us a defender now. So if you look up the word consent, consent is either express or implied. Express when it is given viva voice, out of your mouth, or in writing. Implied when it is manifested by signs, actions, or facts, or by inactive or silent, which raise a presumption that the consent has been given. An agreement to something proposed and differs from assent. 
Consent supposes a physical power to act, a moral power of acting, and a serious, determined, and free use of these powers. So they're saying again that we're, we're giving the power to the judge to do to us what we should have done to him. Hmm. Okay. Voluntary. I mean, these are all cool words. Now, if, these are all these words in the very front, remember? Um, mm-hmm. Prior to a transfer of an offender to the United States, the fact that the offender consents to such transfer and that such consent is voluntary and with full knowledge of the consequences. Okay. Now, what was really funny is when I asked this one judge about Title 18, he said, uh, that's referring to a foreign country. I said, really? Can I read that to you? Because I didn't see the word foreign country in there anywhere. <laughs> it doesn't say foreign country anywhere, does it? Okay, knowledge. Knowledge, information as to a matter or fact. Many acts are perfectly innocent when the party performing them is not aware of certain circumstances attending them. For example, someone may pass a counterfeit note and be criminally guiltless if they did not know it was counterfeit. Or someone may receive stolen goods if they were not aware of the fact that they were stolen. In these types of cases, it is the guilty knowledge or center which makes the crime. So the judge says, do you have knowledge? Do you understand what you did? And when you say yes, Bam. you're saying that you understand that you broke a law. And now you've lied. That's the worst thing, because you didn't break a law when you were speeding. You violated a code. And the code is in an act. We went over this, uh, I think, two weeks ago. The Department of Motor Vehicles Act, which is what he was saying, read today, they were letting the DPS know, the, the motor, motor Vehicle Act was passed unanimously by whoever, okay? The word act, if you go to see your kids at a school play, they're acting, right? When you go there, you can tell they're acting because they all have on costumes and they're playing parts. <laughs> Okay, so when you get pulled over by a highway patrolman, he's in a car that's all painted up so you know he's part of an act. He walks up in a costume, his hat, and stripes on his pants. If they wore that out to dinner and not being a cop, okay, they just wore that out, they'd be in trouble. Okay, so after he gives you a ticket, now he wants you to participate in an act. And the act is you um, broke a code, and we want you to come down to our playground it's like a basketball court. That's why we call it a court, because we're going to play a game on it. And there's going to be someone there acting like a judge, and he's in his costume. He has a black robe on. And the suit against you, we're, we're letting you know it's really not a suit. It's just that the attorney is wearing a suit. He's going to be there. And there's a bailiff dressed up in a bailiff's costume. And he's got some costume jewelry on called a gun and a badge and some handcuffs. Okay, I even know a bailiff who told me that he had plastic handcuffs because they were heavy. And he was lightening up his belt. He didn't have any bullets in his clips because he never needed them. He's in a real quiet town, so he had all this stuff on. And he had it all done up in plastic because it was too heavy to carry around every day. He had all this stuff under his desk so he could get to it if he needed to. It's all an act. And when we agree to play in the act, it comes with some severe consequences. Consequence. That's the next one. Do you understand the consequences? Remember what it says in there? Um, full knowledge of the consequences. And we say, yeah, we have full knowledge of the consequences. I could go to jail and if you'll let me off, which is maybe a fine... I'll try not to speed anymore. I'll get my radar detector working better. <laughs> the effect, result, or outcome of something occurring earlier. That's a consequence. The accident was a consequence of reckless driving. Now, look at number two. An act or instance of following something as an effect, result, or outcome. An act. They tell you. Consequence has something to do with Title 18. It's an, it's an act. In general, the law of California declares that everyone is responsible for an injury occasioned to another by his want of ordinary care. I can't even tell you what that, what that means, okay? But that is, a, that is a brutal, brutal thing when you understand what I just read if you're a secured party creditor, okay? 